case you haven't been following along, I bought an old bread truck that I am converting into a mobile guitar store and stage. And one of the biggest parts of this build is that I'm creating a tailgate that folds down with legs and a winch and all this stuff. And one of the first problems I ran into in developing this stage is that my bumper was too high for any sort of stage to come down and sit level. So I had to cut the tops off of the aluminum bumper of the truck. Now this left me with, you know, a small problem. My first thought was to cut the excess material away and then TIG weld that aluminum cap back onto the bumper. But then I thought, maybe I should try something different. And um, I got the idea to simulate diamond plate in some reclaimed wood to make a nice kind of unique little wooden top for these bumpers. I used that blue tape to sort of give me a line to eyeball when I was cutting, but it wasn't perfect and I had to, of course, go in and clean up my work and level out the tops of the bumper. You can see that there's a slight dent in there and so nothing is really exactly square the way it's supposed to be and that <laughs> dent is surprisingly more difficult to bang out than it looks, so I just was working with what I had on this old truck. I made note of this seam and how far away it was from the edge, but uh, foolishly when I created my file I did it on the straight edge of the shape and not the curved edge, and so I ended up having to cut that material away the old fashioned way. Uh, and I had this piece of 16 inch by 16 inch reclaimed Kumaru blank that I had glued up for a project and never used, and it was just the perfect size to fit my two caps on. So now it was time to design and I of course went straight to my Vectric software. Designing the overall shape was easy, it was just a rectangle with half inch rounded over corners and I took one half of the rectangle and made it a curve and just the way the curve naturally fell was the correct shape. And then I went online and found a picture of some diamond plate and just simply turned it into a vector using the tools that are built right into the Vectric software. I had a whole bunch, I was messing around with these of how to do the edge and um, making them open and close vectors and it ended up being easier to just delete all of the ones that were hanging over the edge instead of trying to close them and make half diamonds appear. But what I needed to figure out was the best way to cut them to get that diamond shape because they're not just flat. First I tried a V-carve cut and it was too deep and then I tried just cutting with a small end mill and it created like a flat edge. I also tried setting a specific V-carve depth but that would have taken forever and would have left a lot of messy lines in between the diamond patterns. So what I settled on doing was a pocket tool path to remove the bulk of the material with an eighth inch end mill at about one tenth of an inch deep. And then I went around the diamond shapes with a 60 degree V bit and cut to the same depth like a profile right around the edge of the diamond shape. And so what this did is chamfer the edge of each individual diamond. And that worked out pretty well. Here I am still experimenting with how I want to deal with some of the diamonds that got cut off and you can see I had to add a pun. <laughs> I ended up changing this to say bumper up the jam instead of bump up the jam. But um, then I, of course, needed to V-carve and set all my depths and, and make that all work. So it took a few minutes of playing around and experimenting, and uh, now I have that file, and I have it forever. Yeah, these two, these two, it moments were I did all of the cutting on my Avid CNC 4x2 machine, and I had also created a file for the bottom side of the piece. What I did is created an eighth inch groove, the thickness of the aluminum, at the spot where I believed the frame of the existing bumper would fit. The idea being that I could then sort of slide it over like a cap. But I knew it was going to be a little bit of a tricky fit. I gave myself a little bit of leeway for error, but it ended up not being enough. I had to go in with just a forcener a bit later and cut away a little bit more material to make it fit properly. Later in this video, I show how I solved this problem and I talk about how I would do it differently in the future. I flipped the work over and I started to carve my diamond pattern. You can see I'm doing the V-bit first where I am carving that profile edge that gives a slight chamfer to all of the diamond shapes. And now I am using that eighth inch end mill to clean up all the negative space in between. I used the same end mill to cut the piece out. I cut halfway from the top and halfway from the bottom with a few tabs. And then it was just a matter of cutting the tabs, taking it out, and sanding down the edges. 
This is a trick I learned from my friend Izzy Swan. A good way to clean out V-carves is to just use a wire brush instead of trying to sand in all those little tiny grooves. And then I just lightly sanded the remainder of the material and I added a little black spray paint to infill my pun. Total Boat is one of the sponsors of my truck build, and if you don't know about this truck, uh, I'll leave a link in the description, and at the end there's a whole vlog series as well as some build videos about it. But here you can see Total Boat coming in handy once again as they do on almost every project I do with the Halcyon finish that I used on the wood as well as the boat soap I used to clean the bumper before I spray painted it black to sort of touch it up a little bit. The finish is water-based and low VOC, and the soap is biodegradable and safe to dump right in the ocean. Um, I love that. I also love their thick so fast cure, like epoxy sort of sealant. This stuff is watertight, it bonds like crazy, and I built this little wooden frame to sort of combat the fact that I didn't have enough sort of purchase and contact point on the plate to satisfy my gluing needs, but I tell you what, after using this thick so and then letting it cure overnight, I, I don't think I'll ever get those bumper tops off. I think that I could have just glued them right onto that skinny 8th inch metal surface and they probably would have held. This stuff is incredible. Here you can see that there's plenty of clearance for me to lower the stage now. And um, if you, those videos are not out, they will be out, so go check them out. And also there's a latch that I have to reach at the top of the truck that requires me to stand here and uh, they work fine, <laughs> just as good as metal. My original plan was to sort of TIG weld it back on and see if I could practice my welding a little bit on that, but then I thought it'd be fun to work in a medium I'm a little more comfortable with and do something unique. So the wood is reclaimed Kumaru decking, which is a, a hardwood from Brazil that's really weather resistant, that's why it's used in decking. I thought that would be a pretty good fit for this. I just happened to have that piece already glued up from a previous project. A couple of my longtime sort of company friends and supporters are Avid CNC and Vectric, and they support this truck as well as a lot of other work I do. And this was an opportunity for me to showcase some of what their equipment can do in sort of a unique and different way. I thought it'd be fun to take something really like, you know, metal diamond plate truck and then import it into this sort of digital CNC world and recreate it uh, using their software and machines. I had done like this sort of outline on the bottom that I thought I could maybe sort of snap it on there but because these have been dented and bent and stuff over the years they're not perfect it didn't fit perfect and I ended up having to kind of hog away a little more material on the underside and then I ended up having to put another piece of wood just for a better way to secure it. These are designed to get beat up they probably will get beat up but the great thing about doing it on the CNC is that I could just cut them again and it would not be any problem at all to replace these with whatever other scrap wood I may have laying around. Uh, next time I wouldn't bother doing all that underside stuff and what I think I would do is make a smaller piece that I could and glue to the inside that fits inside here and that might fit a little bit tighter. But you know, live and learn. That's what we're all doing here, right? Uh, if you want to learn more about the truck in general, I have a whole vlog series about it as well as some videos coming out now. There one, might be one already out about this tailgate build specifically and future builds on the truck will be coming soon. So this has got a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of metal work, a little bit of woodworking, a lot of recycling, reclaiming, and um, some music too. Thanks a lot and be good.